Celebration Lutheran Church. A couple of announcements before we begin. For those of you here in person, hopefully you got your pre-packaged communion kit on the way in um, that has the bread and the wine uh, together in that little cup. For those of you watching the stream of this service, we invite you to commune with us. Um, you just need to set aside a little bread and either some wine or grape juice if you have that, knowing that you can commune. Um, with just the bread or just the wine or grape juice, but set aside just a small amount so that you can take all of it when you commune. And if you have any leftovers, uh, because this is sacrament, we consider holy. If you do have anything left over, please uh, pour it back into creation outside or feed it to the birds. But we give that back to the Lord if you don't finish that. So make note of that. Um, for those in person, our offering is a little different, or if you are streaming, for those in person, we have an offering plate uh, there in the back for you to drop your offering um, as you enter or exit worship, um, so you are able to do that. For those of you watching this stream, we thank you that many of you have continued your support for the mission and ministry here at Celebration. You can do that through the tithe.ly app, which is called the Tithely app. Um, that's the way I give. It's the fastest, easiest way to give. You can give online through our website, celebrationlutheran.com, and at the top of that page, there's a Give Now tab, or you can mail a check into the church. Um, however you choose to continue to support the mission and ministry here, we are grateful. Today, we finish our Lord's Prayer series. It's been a four-part series on the Lord's Prayer, so what a beautiful introduction. Daniel and Karen, thank you for that, um, diving us back into the Lord's Prayer. But we wrap up that series this week, and I just want to invite you to our next series. It's called Gen X, not just because I'm Generation X. It's not that Gen X. It's G-E-N, capital E, X, for Genesis and Exodus, that we look at the story across the generations, uh, then and now, and how our lives tie to the history of our ancestors of faith. So their generation isn't just something back then, but their story is our story. It's an incredible series. I'm excited about it. Um, so you want to make sure that starts next week to join us for that. 
And if you've missed any part of this Lord's Prayer series, you can find that on our YouTube channel, Celebration Lutheran Mount Julian, or on our Facebook page. Um, so you can go back and catch those as well. Let us prepare our hearts for worship. Let us pray. Please join me. O oh God, you come to us in unexpected places, in isolation, behind closed doors, on dusty roads, as we go from place to place, in video chats with friends, 
and telephone conversations with loved ones. You come bringing us peace where there is no peace. You come bringing us hope when everything seems hopeless. You come bringing us courage when we are afraid. Come and be among us now in every place where we are. Open our eyes to see you. Open our hearts to know you. In the name of the risen Christ we pray. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Also with you. We share that peace with one another while keeping our social distance. So turn to the folks around you and wish them peace. For those of you watching the stream, God's peace be with you. And if you would type just peace back in the chat, um, we would love to receive that peace and your desire for God's peace to be on us as well. So uh, put that in there. And I hope that you feel from all of us gathered here, uh, we wish you the peace of the Lord to be with you. For our gospel lesson, for our Lord's Prayer series, we continue again, once again, with the Gospel of Luke, chapter 11, verses 2 through 4. Jesus told his disciples, When you pray, say, Father, uphold the holiness of your name. Bring in your kingdom. Give us the bread we need for today. Forgive us our sins for we also forgive everyone who has wronged us, and don't lead us into temptation. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, O Christ. Christ. For our young people here, for our young people watching the stream, the Lord's Prayer. That's been our series. We've talked about it for four weeks now. But what an awesome prayer. And I say that because this is the prayer that Jesus gave to his first disciples. They came to Jesus and they said, Lord, teach us to pray. And this prayer is the prayer that Jesus gave them. So that's why we consider it so important, because when we don't know what to pray, sometimes I don't even know what to pray. You can pray this prayer. Today, I want to focus on that last line that you've just heard, and don't lead us into temptation. But what we're really asking for right there when we pray those words is for God to guide us in making good decisions. I don't know about you, but I don't always make good decisions. But I know if I have big decisions that are coming up, and you will face plenty of big decisions in your life, you can pray about that. And that line in this prayer, that's what it means, that you can pray for God to carry you through whatever's going on in life, for God to guide you through all your hard times that you're going to face in life. Know that God is listening. That's God's promise to you. And that God hears you and that God is with you. And I found so many times in my life when I came up to things and I couldn't make a decision, but there were big things in life, like whether to buy this house or not, right? You're going to face just huge decisions. Where to live, what job to take, what school to go to someday. All of those are going to be big decisions that you make. I just want to share with you, when I have those big decisions to make, I pray. And when I don't know what to pray, I pray this prayer right here, because this is the prayer that Jesus gave his first disciples and we have been praying this prayer as the people of God for 2,000 years. But know this. When you pray, God hears you. And pray for God to help you make the right decision, to make good decisions. Not just what you want, but what God wants. To lead you and to guide you into the ways that God would just bless you. And so where God would have you serve, all those things are affected by the decisions you make. God gives you the freedom to make those decisions. But like a loving parent, God is always willing to help guide you in making those decisions. Learn this prayer. Know this prayer. If you don't have this prayer memorized yet, learn it and memorize it. So for the parents watching this at home, teach this prayer to your children. When we baptize young folks in the Lutheran Church, 
One of the promises we make and the parents make and godparents make is that they will teach you this prayer. Learn it and memorize it. And don't just memorize it, know what it means. And if you need help doing that, that's why Luther wrote the small catechism. And there's an app for that, right? There's an app for everything. If you don't have it, and for all of you even here or watching, there are a couple apps of Luther's small catechism online I'm not going to recommend. But like for me, for Apple, there's at least two that pop up. You just type in Luther small, you even start that next word, and it gives you those app choices, right, in the search feature. So download Luther's small catechism, and it'll help you teach your children, because you can read word for word what Luther wrote about each petition in the Lord's Prayer. What a great teaching tool. And he wrote it for parents to teach their kids. So as you teach your kids this prayer, you can use the small catechism. You can always call me and ask me questions as well. I'm happy to be there and help. But for our young folks, guidance and prayer, such a big thing. Let's try it out now. Let us pray. Lord, don't lead us into bad decisions or temptations or into evil, but always guide us away from that. Guide us into making good decisions. You have promised to hear us and we pray, and so we call on you now, Lord, to lead us and guide us each and every moment of every day. In Jesus' name, the one who gave his life for us, we pray. Amen. <clears throat> The Lord's Prayer, part four. <clears throat> Lead us not. Notice I put a comma after lead us. That's not my idea, but we'll get to that. If we are serious about our commitment to prayer, and I am making the assumption that you are, it's great to go back to things like the Lord's Prayer I think about when my mom taught me the Lord's Prayer, or when I studied it again in second grade in Sunday school, or with our confirmation class, or again in seminary. Every time I come back to the Lord's Prayer, the Lord teaches me something deeper, something new. And so I hope that's been true for you in this series, and I hope that in this series you have some things that you can take home with you that help you understand this prayer on a deeper level, that renew the fire of the Holy Spirit when you pray this prayer that helps to transform you. And I'm assuming, I make the assumption when we do this series that you want to be better at prayer. I know I do. And you're thinking, yeah, your pastor, even your pastor wants to be better at prayer. Everybody that I know needs to be better at prayer. Every Christian follower, disciple of Jesus Christ. I've had a couple people in my life that I've met that I think are just absolutely the best at prayer, and I don't think they could get much better, but when I've talked to them, they always think they can be better at prayer. And they think it's important to keep trying, to have that closeness to God, to experience God's love and mercy. So that's why this series is so important. And if you've missed, I mentioned in the welcome, if you've missed the three parts, the first three parts of this series, you can go back and watch those online. But today, we're going to focus in on how Luke ends this prayer. We get the short version in Luke. Lead us not into temptation, or the modern version, and I told you, I give you that just to be ordinary, to make it fresh in your minds, and don't lead us into temptation. Let's start this way. I want you to think about your calendar, what you have coming up this week. Just pause for a minute and think about the places that you were going this week, or if there wasn't a pandemic, the places you would want to go this week. Think about that. <clears throat> Where are you going? What are you going to? What are you going to? And if you're like me, all of those things start flooding in. Okay, I've got to be here on this day, here on the next day, here this morning, another place this afternoon, and then it all starts swimming. Right? As parents, we said, we've got two kids, and we still, one of them's getting close to driving, which scares me, so I'm praying for that. But, right, we still are, you know, the mom and dad taxi system, so there's always those things, one more place to get them to, to get us to. 
And so you get that rush in life, not just with our jobs, but with kids' activities, our activities. So there's always some place it feels like we're, we're going to. And you finally get home, you know, at night, you try to have a few minutes to unwind and rest, thinking, I hope I can get enough sleep before I wake up in the morning and I have to get to the next place. Always trying to get to, going to that next place. So I want you to take that where you're going to. Now, set that aside. Take that, set that aside. Now, instead of what you're going to, I want you to think of what you're going through. We are all going through different life situations. I mentioned my kids, there will come a day where we're going through not having them around anymore. Or not every day, not near as much. That also scares me. And I'm praying for that. But what are you going through? I can look at around the room and, and my heart for what you're going through, what you're going through, what you're going through, what you're going through. Because I know your stories. And you just look around the room and you realize that we are all going through something. Aren't we? When you're watching this at home. What are you going through? So now you have these two things. What are you going to? And what are you going through? Sometimes we do so much of this, we lose sight of what we're going through because we're always so focused on the next activity of what we are going through. I mean, what we're going to. But that nagging of what we're always going through that never leaves us, that's the stress and anxiety besides the rush of getting to the next activity. That's exactly why Jesus gave us this part of the prayer. And don't lead us into temptation. Some things don't translate very well. And sometimes we don't want to translate them differently because for a few hundred years we've known these words. And these are beautiful words, right? And it's beautiful that we pray for God not to lead us into temptation. Pastor Adam Hamilton, right? A Methodist pastor, helped teach me on this. He did a series on this that I watched. And he said, you know, when we pray this, they don't give us punctuation in Greek. But there should probably be a comma after the lead us. Because a parent who loves us doesn't lead us or want us to go through hard times or bad things. Now, we know we need that sometimes because if you think about it, those things you have gone through already help shape and form who you are today. That God at times has used that to form you. But God goes through that with you. But how different does this prayer feel if you put a comma after the lead us? Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Interesting thing. So I wanted to know more about that. So I looked up that word in the Greek, right? The lead us. And it's the Greek word, root word here is isphero. You want to go home smarter, right? Or you want to be at home learning. This is what disciples do, learners. So say that word after me, isphero. Isphero. Don't forget that word. Because that word that we say lead us, it does have a connotation of leading. But if you look at a literal translation, a, a translation of isfero, it means to bring, to bring into or bring through, to carry into or carry through. Here's why that's important. Think about those activities. I told you, pull that compartment, pull it right back here that you have. Now picture yourself when you pray this prayer of God carrying you to that activity. I don't know about you, but for me, I already begin to feel different. Not quite as rushed to get there, but to get there with a purpose. To get there as a servant of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. To get there as a servant and lover of God. 
to be there as a follower of Christ rather than just to rush to get there because I'm supposed to be there or my kid's supposed to be there. But that carried to, to bring you to that situation. And think about what that means, ice fero, to bring you to, or to carry you to, or to carry you through. It's one of those favorite lines that I have from an old song, Christian song, I can't even remember the title of it sometimes, but it's, sometimes God calms the storm, and sometimes God calms the child. That God doesn't remove every storm from us because sometimes I don't think God caused those bad things, but God uses those bad things to form us and shape us. Think about the unity in this country after a Hurricane Katrina. Did God cause that devastation? I don't believe that at all. Did God cause the people of this country and around the world to help us to rise up and come together to put people back on their feet to restore lives? You betcha. And look at the unity. We could use a whole lot more of that right now, right? That togetherness. So God took something bad and brought something beautiful. We can think about it when we think back to a 9-11, that God used something terrible, but often out of those terrible, tragic events that we experience together to bring a unity. To think of a situation like George Floyd and all of us to look around and instead come together in unity and say, we have to do better. It's not a police have to do better. Yes, they do. We have to do better. And many of the police officers I know do better. But we, right, have to come together and have to be better. And has that happened? Not on our own. I've seen what humans do to each other. But that we ask that God carry us through all of these trials to something better. That's what we're praying for when we pray for God's kingdom to come, that we more closely resemble the ways of heaven here on earth. Not once we die, we just get to enjoy eternal bliss, but that we are the agents of God, that God would carry us to these situations for such a time as this to be the voice of love and grace that calls our world to do better. And we have to. I'm a parent. We have to do better. I hope to be a grandparent someday. We have to do better now. And then I look at our younger generation, and there are a few of you in here younger than I am. It's a good thing about being middle-aged. You have to do better as well. You have to do better than the generation before you. We all make mistakes, but always progressing towards the fullness of the kingdom of God that every generation is called to do better. And it starts with that I sparrow. It starts with that part of the prayer. So when you pray the Lord's Prayer this week, I want you to think of that God carry me to my events my task that you have laid out before me. But I want you to remember those life situations and you pray for God to carry you through. And I think that's even more important because in those life situations, the word we translate here is sometimes temptations. You get in some of the modern versions and we say trials, save us from the time of trial, lead us not into temptation, the Greek word here, you want to learn one more Greek word this week? Parosmos. Say it after me, parosmos. And it really does mean a testing or a proving. Not just what I'm tempted to do or not tempted to do. That gets our minds in the Western world thinking here in America of Puritan culture, right? Of sex, drugs, and rock and roll. It's so much deeper than that. The things, the trials, the testings, the things that I go through. Don't lead me to it, but carry me through it. 
So it really is a prayer to carry me around that or carry me through that. One chapter from now, Jesus warns his disciples about the parosmos they will go through. Basically, he tells them, you will be arrested. You will be put on trial. And the Holy Spirit will give you the words to say that God will guide you through those trials. And I love the traditional version, right? It's the version my mama taught me. And I love God not leading me into those things that I would be tempted to just on a human nature side, right, to do wrong. But so much more than that. So much more than that. Whatever trials you are going through, that God would walk with you, lock, step, and key through that. I worked in a Christian bookstore, and I can't tell you how many versions of footprints in the sand we sold on bookmarks, on pictures, on, you know, Bible covers. And after a while, you sell so many of those, and you read it so many times, it becomes a little cheesy. But that footprints in the sand, where the guy dies, looks back at his life, and says, you know, you know, I see the times in my life, there's two footprints, God's and mine. And then there's times where there's one footprint, and I realize those were the hardest times in my life. And then in the good times, there's two sets of footprints. God, where were you when I was down? Why is there one set of footprints when I was going through the trials? And that's the time. God says, I carried you through. One set of footprints. And if you are going through those life situations right now, I wholeheartedly believe. And that's the beauty and why it's so beloved that there is one set of footprints for the followers of Jesus Christ that God will carry you through whatever trials and difficulties you are going through right now for as long as it takes. For as long as it takes until we are with God and God doesn't have to carry us anymore because we are just fully with God. But until then, in this life, that God will, I spero, not only carry you, bring you to it, but bring you through it. When we, pay, when we pray this part of the Lord's Prayer, I want you to stop this week. Use whichever words are most comfortable to you. Right? And lead us not into temptation. Save us from the time of trial. And don't lead us into temptation. But I want you to come back to this and make that your prayer. That's my challenge for you this week. It's a two-part challenge. One, for yourself. Whatever you are going through, that God will carry you, bring you through, carry you through. Bring you to it, carry you through it. But we don't live this life alone, do we? We live this life in community. And I want you to think of another person, someone that God has brought into your life, and you know their trials. You are the friend that is going to help them through. You are the parent that is going to help them through. You are the godparent that is going to help them through. You are the mentor, the co-worker, that is going to be a piece of God carrying them through the trial. And I want you to spend time, when you get to this petition in the Lord's Prayer, praying for that person, that God would use you in some ways a piece of that puzzle, but that God would carry them through the trials that they are facing. And doesn't that open it up in a beautiful, deeper way? Pray that God brings you to every task this week, and that God carries you through every trial this week. And then pray for a friend or someone that God has laid on your heart and put in your life, that God brings them to every task this week and carries them through every trial this week. Amen. Our scars are a sign of grace in our lives. Oh, Father, how you brought us through. 
When deep were the wounds and dark was the night, the promise of your love you proved. Now every battle still to come, let this be our song. It is well, it is well, with my soul, with my soul, it is well, it is well, with my soul. Weeping may come, remain for a night. But joy will paint the morning skies You're there in the fast You're there in the feast Your faithfulness will always shine Now every blessing still to come Let this be our song It is well with my soul, with my soul, it is well, it is well with my soul. I trust your ways, trust your ways. I trust your name, trust your name, it is well. My soul, you lead us through battle. You lead us through battle. You lead us to blessing. You lead us to blessing. And you make us fruitful. And you make us fruitful. In the land of our suffering, God, it is well. It is well with my soul. It is well. It is well with my soul. With my soul. It is well. It is well with my soul. I trust. Trust your name, trust your name, it is well, it is well with my soul, it is well, it is well with my soul, it is well. With my soul, with my soul, it is well, it is well with my soul. I trust your ways, trust your ways, I trust your name, trust your name. For the prayers of the people, we are using the Lord's Prayer, but I will pause after each petition and you will see in parentheses something for you to pray for. Here in our community, we continue to lift up the Hennessy family. Um, you see the beautiful flowers from our memorial service yesterday for Carla's mom, Georgia Sutler, so please keep Carla and Mike and their family in your prayers. For Shannon as she awaits uh, liver transplant, and so many more. Um, but please add the Hennessy family and Shannon Goins to your prayers. Let us pray.
Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. We pray for the kingdom to break into our world anew and afresh every day. Please join me. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. We pray for our schools, for faculty, for staff, for teachers and students, for coaches, for school boards, for universities, for all of those during this time of global pandemic doing the best they can but continuing education for so many. We pray for those recovering from hurricanes. We pray for those whose lives have been devastated by fire. We pray for those who have experienced death in their family. We pray for all of those who are going through trials. We lift up to you, especially the Hennessy family and Shannon, and those we name in our hearts before you now. We pray that God would provide for our needs. Give us today our daily bread. I invite you to share with someone near you. And if you are by yourself watching this stream, just share it out loud with God. But share with someone near you one of your needs and then pray a short prayer uh, for God to carry them through. We pray for God's grace and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. And we pray for God to bring us to and carry us through the trials that we face. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. all our hopes and fears we entrust to the Lord for the kingdom and the power and the glory are yours forever and ever and ever Amen. this is where we normally collect the offering I told you in the announcements how you can still give but thank you for your support for the mission and ministry that helps us make a difference here in Mount Juliet and throughout Wilson County let us pray. Gracious God, accept these gifts and with them our lives to be used in your service 
Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. When our Lord Jesus faced hard times, he prayed. When the people of God faced hard times, when they were slaves in Egypt, they cried out for God to deliver them and to see them through. When they went through trials in the wilderness, they prayed for God to carry them through to the promised land. And God provided water. God provided bread. God provided food. When Jesus gathered his disciples for one last meal, he would leave that meal and return to the garden for prayer, to pray for the Father's guidance in his life. But at that meal, he promised his disciples that he would be with them and that God would see them through the trials that were to come. The meal of God's promise for God's people reminded them how God had provided bread. He took that bread, he gave thanks, he broke it, and he gave it to them. But this time he said to them, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, gave it for all of them to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sins. Do this for the remembrance of me. The same forgiveness that Jesus taught us to pray for in the Lord's Prayer, he offers to us in the bread and the wine. This meal, this life given for you. <laughs> People of God, the body of Christ, given for you. And the blood of Christ shed for you. We express our gratitude for God's mercy through prayer. Please join me. Lord, no words can express our gratitude of your sacrifice for us. May the bread and wine remain with us as we seek to take your message of love and grace into the world. Amen. As you are able, please rise for the blessing. You are not too young or too old. You are not too rich or too needy to bring good news to the poor, to give a hand to the brokenhearted, and to live out freedom and pardon through the gifts you have been given. So remember to pack peace in your toolbox, hope in your backpack, and love in your lunchbox. Do not be frightened, for you are never alone. The God in whose image you are made will walk with you and guide you today, tomorrow, and every day. Amen. A mighty fortress is our God, a bulwark never failing. Our helper, he amid the flood of mortal.
mortal ills prevailing, for still our ancient foe doth seek to work us more. His craft and power are great, and armed with cruel hate. On earth is not his Did we in our own strength confide, our striving would be losing. Were not the bright man on our side, the man of God's own choosing? Dost ask who that may be? Christ Jesus, it is He. Lord Sabbath, his name, from age to age the same, and he must win the battle. And though this world with devils filled should threaten to undo us, we will not fear, for God hath willed His truth to triumph through us. The Prince of Darkness grim, we tremble not for Him. His rage we can endure, for lo, His doom is sure. One little word shall fail him. That word above all earthly powers, no thanks to them abide. The Spirit and the gifts are ours through Him who with us sided. Let goods and kindred go, this mortal life also. The body they may kill, God's truth abideth still. His kingdom is forever. Go in peace, love, and serve the Lord. Praise be to God.